In this video, we will be proving the Euler's theorem. Now, Euler's theorem is actually the generalization of Fermat's theorem. So, let before we prove the Euler's theorem, let us recall what is Fermat's theorem. So, we have the Fermat's theorem as if, if P is a prime and P does not divide A. So, we may also say or the GCD of A and P is equal to 1. Then, a raised to power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p. So that's the Fermat's theorem. In fact, the proof of the Fermat's theorem was given by Euler only. So proof of above was given by Euler in 1736 and in 1760 the above was generalized so the above is generalized so this is the generalization of msa fermat's theorem because this fermat's theorem is only applicable for prime and now in euler's theorem what we want to say is instead of p as a prime we want to generalize it for any integer so this theorem is so what is this euler's theorem so euler's theorem says that if gcd of a comma n is equal to 1 then a raised to power phi n is congruent to 1 modulo n for any positive integer n so you may take even for any positive integer or any integer this result should hold okay and for example you may also take this example before we prove this theorem say n is equal to 30 and let us take a is equal to 11 so we know n is equal to 30 and a is equal to 11 the only thing that we need to check is that gcd of a and n should not be uh, should be equal to 1 so this means the gcd of 11 and 30 so that is 1 now we want to verify this theorem that is 11 raised to power 30 this so what is 11 raised to power 30 so 11 raised to power phi 30 because n is my 30 so it's phi 30 this is congruent to 11 raised to power 8 we know phi 30 is 8 by the definition what is phi 30 what is the definition of phi n function where phi n this is the number of integers the number of integers which are which are relatively primes with n which are relatively prime to n and are less than or equal to n and are less than or equal to n so from there we can calculate immediately phi 30 is 8 so this means it is 11 raised to power 8 that means i can write this as 11 square raised to power 4 this means i can write 11 square is 121 4 and 121 is congruent to 1 modulo 30 so i am replacing this with 1 and this is further 1 raised to power 4 it's all modulo 30 so this is the Euler's theorem. Now before we prove this theorem, I must need to do a lemma. So that will help us to prove the theorem immediately. Now let's do that lemma. Now what happens in this lemma here? So we again consider a positive integer greater than 1. And we take the GCD of A and N is equal to 1. And if a1, a2 up till a phi n, these are the positive integers. If these are the positive integers less than n and relatively prime to n, then a a1 up till so on a a phi n are congruent to a1 up till so on a phi n modulo n in some model so this means what we are doing we are considering 
we are considering all the positive integers which are less than uh, n and when i say less than n or less than equal to n this really um, this is an obvious case by definition because suppose if you want to calculate the gcd of n and with the last number n so it's not one it is n so this is automatically equality will automatically vanish out from here so whether you write less than n or you write less than equal to n so when we actually find out in the definition this works for both the cases okay so now uh, suppose now you want to prove this case so before i prove this case what i'm going to take i'm going to also take an example so that this statement is pretty clear to all of you what is this example what we need to do is uh, we need to choose a number n so suppose that i choose a number 9 and then i want to choose a gcd of a and n so suppose you choose a number a as minus 4 okay and if a1 a2 up till a phi n are the positive integer less than n and that are relatively prime so um relatively prime to 9 relatively prime to 9 and less than 9 are this set what is this set so we will have the integers 1 2 4 5 7 and 8 these are the numbers which are less than or equal to 9 and they are relatively prime so whether you put here equality or less than it really doesn't matter okay now in this case this number is my a1 this number is a2 this number is a3 this is a4 this is a5 and this here is a6 so because the 6 here is phi of 9 so that's how that's how this set is taken up that's how this particular set is taken up so we consider these number and what we now need to prove is we need to prove is that when you multiply this a a with other these number this should be congruent to a1 up till this one. so let's multiply this number here let's now multiply what would be so if i now consider a set here if i now consider a a1 and then i need to consider a a2 a a3 and a a4 a a5 and finally a a6 what it will become i need what is my a a is minus 4 so you multiply here this will give me a set here as minus 4 minus 8 minus 16 minus 20 minus 28 and minus 32 and this is congruent to 5 this one is congruent to 1 and i'm considering all modulo modulo 9 because in my condition what is modulo 9 and so this is congruent to modulo 9 so this is 2 this is congruent to 7 this is congruent to 8 and this is congruent to 4 so you see this set precisely the set star and the set double star they both are same okay so star is equal to double star in some order in some order so when we say in some order that means you just need to check what is the order so they are not distinct this is what it says that the set which we have written here a a1 a phi1 is congruent to a1 up till a phi n in some order now let's prove this theorem so the first thing that we need to show is that uh, among these two set among this there is no nothing which is congruent to each other because if they are congruent to each other this number is going to become same so let's first show that so first we show first we show no two integers a a1 up till so on a a v n are congruent modulo are congruent modulo n okay so if it happens if it happens so i'll prove this by contradiction so we'll take if it happens so that means a a i is congruent to a a v n and here oh, sorry not v n but I, I may take it as any j so a a j modulo n and we know that because th these a i's were those number which are strictly less than n you see here a i's are those which are strictly less than n or equal to n so we may e in fact equal uh, remove this equality because we this is sufficient to put this sign as strictly less than and this i and j 
varies from phi n. So this means by cancellation law, because the GCD of A and N is 1, I can cancel from A from both sides. So this means A i is congruent to A j modulo n. And that's a contradiction. But this is a contradiction. You see from the condition this, this is a contradiction. So this means none of the two integers in the above set are congruent to each other. That is A a 1, A phi n. And now... We also know that the GCD of a comma n is 1 and we also know that the GCD of a i is with n is 1. So this means the product is also 1. Now the proof of this lemma I have already done in my last video. Proof of this is already done. Is already done in last video. So you can check out that also. Okay, so uh, so once we know that the GCD of A and N is 1 and GCD of A is N. In fact, this was the if and only if result. If this holds, then the above hold. If this holds, then this hold. So now for fixed value, so for a fixed, and this will hold for every i. So this means, say if GCD of A and N is equal to 1, this means and A1 N. So if you take the GCD of A1 with N is 1, so this means A A1 N is 1. And similarly, if i is equal to 2, this means a a to n is equal to 1. So this means this will hold for all i which we are actually wearing here in this particular set. Okay, all i. So here we have 6 uh, integers which are relatively prime with 9. So for fixed i, there exists a unique positive integer. There exists a unique positive integer b such that this b will be strictly less than n and I may say a a i is congruent to b modulo n okay because these are if this this side it is any number this must be congruent to some sort of remainder now this is in the reduced form b so this has to and we are claiming that the gcd is equal to 1 so this means this number cannot be n it has to be slightly less than n it's like a remainder so I found this quantity that this must be congruent to b modulo n and we know that the gcd of a a i with n is 1 so this means this is same as gcd of b and n because they are congruent to each other so this is 1 so this so when, once we say this condition that the gcd of b and n is equal to 1 so what does it mean b must belong to b must belong to the set a1 up till a of a because these were the only number which were less than n and whose GCD with n is 1. So, B must belong to this number. Or I may say because what is B? B was nothing but B was A, A, I. This must belong to the set A1 up till A, V, N. And in the similar way. So, or we may say the set A, A1 up till A, A, V, 1. A, A, V, N. This is same as a1 up till a phi n in some order. So that's not different, but this is same as in some order. So that proves our result. And we, we have already verified this from the star and double star equation that they both are same. Now, once we are done with this uh, proof of the lemma, it's very, very easy to prove the theorem. Because in the theorem, we are simply going to use a previous lemma. And we can immediately get our result. If n is greater than or equal to 1 and GCD of a and n is equal to 1, then a raised to power phi n is congruent to 1 modulo n. This is what the Euler's theorem says. And that's a generalization of the Fermat theorem because it works for every positive integer n. Now, as n is greater than or equal to 1, so we may have two cases when n is equal to 1. What will happen in fn is equal to 1? So this means gcd of a n 1 is always 1 because here we have considered this as 1. So a can be anything. The gcd of a n n is 1, always 1. And this also implies that a raised to power phi 1, which is 1, is always congruent to 1 modulo 1 because 1 divides every number. So 1 divides, so which is true, 
which is true because one divides all all positive integers so that so this n is equal to 1 is a very trivial case now let us consider n strictly greater than 1 if n is greater than 1 so you, we again take in the similar way as we have considered in the lemma let a1 a2 up till a v n be positive integers these be positive integers less than n that are relatively prime to n that are relatively prime to n and we also know that the gcd of and we have already considered in the statement you take a number a whose gcd is equal to 1 so by lemma so this implies by lemma a a1 up till so on a a v n these are congruent to a1 up till a v n in some order so if this is in some order let's multiply all them all together so the multiplication that means carrying so say all numbers so if i multiply a a1 a a v n and if i multiply the this set a1 a v n they must be congruent to each other because this set and this set uh, left hand side set and the right hand side they are exactly now same and the order does not matter because we have already multiplied okay so or if you uh, if you want to consider this as a particular way that this number is congruent to particular this number or this number so you may even rename them that this is congruent to this one and further ai dash is nothing but it is a1 only a1 a v n you you may write in this order also okay so it it doesn't really matter we can we can directly multiply the whole set or so at this moment i'm just multiplying this whole set all together and i'm not considering this as dash so multiply all elements together of the first set multiply all elements of the second set together they, they both are congruent to each other now what happens is how many times in this set a is repeating a is repeating v n times and then leave all the other elements aside so that's the set and on this side also i have a1 till a of v n modulo n and then now as gcd of a1 with n is 1 gcd of a2 with n is 1 so on gcd of a v n with n is 1 these were the numbers which are relatively prime with n so this implies the product a1 up till a v n with n is 1 so this means you can apply a cancellation law so this implies a raised to power v n is congruent to 1 modulo n so i'm cancelling this quantity i'm just cancelling out this quantity on both side because this result hold because it, the gcd is 1 is equal and that proves our theorem which proves euler's theorem which proves euler's theorem so it's a very very interesting proof and which follows immediately from the lemma showing that this set is equal to this set in some order now in the next video we will be covering some applications of the Euler's theorem